All right. So, uh, to catch us all up on what happened last time and uh, to ensure that everybody is on the uh, same, uh, whatever, uh, moving forward, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick breakdown of the last session, and then we will jump right in. Uh, so, last time, we found Obak, who had just disturbed this rather large creature of the swamps. Immediately, you all jumped into combat, attempting to bring it down. After a hard-fought battle, where some of you took heavy blows, dropping you and bringing you near death, you'd finally bring it down. The strange corpse of this twisted and unnatural creature lay before you. Uh, Torsten, you, you pleaded that this was the evidence required. Your journey could be finished here, and you could return back to uh, meet the lung costs. Unfortunately, while everybody agreed that there certainly wasn't something right regarding this corpse, the others weren't so sure that it would be enough, and so instead took the creature's hand as one piece of evidence, hoping to find more to further prove the situation in the marshlands. You would all rest for the, uh, the rest of the evening, resolute to continue your journey the following morning. Uh, Torsten, you would take lead, and unfortunately, after some travel, came to realize that you were lost. The high reeds, the changing landscape of the marshlands was just a bit too much, even for a skilled veteran of the swamps, such as yourself. Instead, uh, Manon and Anister both were sure of the appropriate way to go. They too, unfortunately, further adding to the lost nature the party was in. Deciding to just make for the west and regroup bra uh, back at the maintained path that cuts through the marshlands, you started to travel that way, uh, knowing at the very least the direction you were heading, um, you know, sure of this, sure of it this time. Uh, while traveling, Anister would go missing from the group, uh, having lost his footing and being held trapped underneath the water in a sinkhole without as much a chance to scream. You'd all go to try and find him, unfortunately finding something else in this part of the marshlands. Frog-like humanoids would erupt from the pools around you and start to give chase. As you all tried to keep up, Akaya, you would fall, twisting your ankle as you went down, these three frog creatures encircling you. But before they could act, the other members of the party would all appear on either side. And so, as you all stood facing each other, the sound of something large and dangerous in the distance closing in would become very obvious to all of you, but the current standoff had its own issues. And so, I think that is exactly where we pick up, and we'll figure out how we move forward. So, um, let me... Okay, uh, so... As e all five of you, Akaya, you on your back, right, like, looking up at these three creatures that are, like, pseudo kind of closing in, but they don't really seem to be making uh, too much of an approach, especially now, um, as you hear the sounds of Torsten and Obak from the opposite side behind you, uh, kind of er erupting back through the reeds uh, of the swamp, you know. Uh, and then you see in front of you, right, uh, Manon and Anister also doing the same uh, from the opposite direction, so... At least in this moment, you are not alone as these creatures kind of encircle you from either side. Uh, so, one thing I would like to make clear before we decide, or before things start to play out. Uh, all five of you can hear, and you even notice that these frog-like uh, humanoid creatures also have picked up on the sound of something large kind of uh, bursting through the reads on approach uh, for now it is at a distance that is you know at the very least it feels comfortable that if you needed to run you would absolutely have the opportunity to um but uh, these creatures that are kind of encircled uh, akaya in this moment are not uh it, it's almost like you're in a like a standoff situation right um they're kind of waiting to see what's going to happen. You're also kind of waiting to see what's happening, what's going to happen. Um, but they definitely don't look friendly as they, um, as they look at Akaya. And at, of the three that you notice, um, the middle one seems to have a, a higher kind of air of authority to it. Uh, the other two frog-like creatures keep kind of looking back and forth uh, towards this middle one, and this middle one is just kind of waiting patiently, kind of looking around. Um, they do have weapons, um, uh, and kind of uh, 
kind of strangely crafted uh, clothing. Uh, so. As we jump in. I would say Akaya, Ak since you're the closest to the to these creatures, right? And you're kind of you're not flat on your back, but you're definitely um I guess would be considered prone. Um you see these three. Uh what is your instinct right now as they kind of stand looming over you, uh kind of looking back and forth from each other, uh looking at the others around. Uh and all the while that sound of whatever it is kind of breaking through the reeds of the swamps. Uh, seems to continue its approach. Uh, well, my instinct is to uh, get away from these things uh, and ideally put someone else between me and them because I can defend that someone else better than I can defend myself. <laughs> so, yeah. so do you attempt yeah. to kind of like try to slowly back off? Yeah. They... Do I, can I tell that... Um... Obok and Torsten are behind me. Yeah, you can def you definitely heard them, and I can say like with a quick glance behind you, they say they seem about fifteen feet away from you. Okay, well, yeah. I I move uh, backwards towards them. Okay. Um. Whilst, so uh, uh, keeping uh, maintaining eye contact with the uh, with the middle one. Okay. So do you? So the way I want to ask is, do you essentially crawl backwards? Or do you stand up? I, I crawl backwards slowly, keeping an eye on them in case they uh, decide to jump me. Okay. Um, so say you move about five feet, right? Kind of moving back. And then the larger one, the middle one, will kind of step forward. And it draws what is... Um, what can only be described as kind of like a crudely crafted... Uh, like a bludgeoning instrument with spikes on it. Um, it kind of steps forward and holds it out in your direction. Uh, essentially, almost as like a warning for you not to do anything in this moment. Uh, but, um, so as you kind of back away just a bit, uh, I'll say since, hmm, I mean, everybody's kind of close here. Um, here we'll roll for one and two. It'll be Obak and Torsten. And three and four, it'll be Manon and Anister. Okay, so. Um, alrighty. Uh, so. Uh, Anister. Um, well, actually, I would say this side of the fight. Manon and Anister. Uh, as you see, Akai kind of, you know, try to like slowly slink back through the mud. Um, you see the larger of these uh, frog-like creatures kind of step forward with this uh, weapon raised, uh, kind of out, outstretched towards Akaya. Uh, what are the two of you doing? Um, I believe last session I attempted to cast um, Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, you're right, you're right. Sorry, sorry. Let me... So we are kicking off with that directly. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, Anister, you were armed, right? So you essentially had the crossbow ready. Uh, right. And uh, Manon stepped into daze. Okay. Um, all right, so I think then... Uh, hmm. I'll say, for the sake of the potential to for this to not be... Um, erupting right into combat. Uh, I would say that Torsten and Obak, the two of you kind of see Manon start to uh, essentially cast this uh, spell in the direction of the um, the frog-like creatures. Uh, do either of you do anything to kind of attempt to stop it or anything along those lines? Or you just watch and see what happens afterwards? Obak will glance to Torsten to take a, a cue as to if he's going to try and like interfere, otherwise Obox ready to get into the fight as well. He's probably at this point still carrying his pole arm. Um, do I recognize these creatures at all, GM? Um, Am I familiar with them in any way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for sure, for sure, for you, uh, these are boggards. These are uh, essentially like frog-like uh, beings that live within the swamps. They're very very territorial. So the fact that you've essentially kind of, what you can only assume, kind of passed through a nest of some sorts of theirs, 
um, truly has them, you know, right, extremely aggressive yeah. in this moment. Um, no, no chance of a diplomatic way out of this at all. Um, yeah, yeah, I know he's only got a split second to really think about this, but yeah, um, yeah I don't think I speak their language. I yeah, I they have a language. I'm not sure how much Torsten would actually know about them. Yeah, they definitely have a language. Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, roll me uh, a swamp check. Let's put that expertise. Okay. All right. Fair enough. To see if there's anything right that. Like in this in the split moment of this, right? Um, oh, you're, you're, yeah, you're you're racking your mind. You're like, what can I do right here? Like, what can I do to stop? You know, what is almost inevitable in your mind, right? Uh, and you're just lost. You know, there's something there. There's something there. Uh, but in this moment, and seeing Manon just cast this spell, right? Like, just you know, uh, fully commit to it. Um, the potential. Uh, is just kind of he's lost in this, yeah. Just kind of lost he's, in this he's moment. He's too old, his mind doesn't work like it used to. Obek, all you'll see is Torsten sort of hesitating, not moving to attack, but not staying or doing anything to, to stop them from attacking our friends. All right, so. That's um, good. With this hesitation, Obak would just take steps forward to try and get, uh, get Anister within reach of my blade so I can kind right. of like cover him. All right, well, um, we're going to activate a combat scenario uh, and so um essentially with the way pathfinder works whenever you go to do like something like a, a day spell all right uh, you immediately drop right into combat so um in this uh, situation uh we'd actually have to roll initiative and then we'll jump right in right so like it's a uh, essentially the idea is that even though you kind of called for the the day spell initially um doesn't work in the the same manner that it like you know would immediately uh get the drop and then you roll initiative it's a uh, it all comes at once so um but because for sure that uh that manon is going for the stays spell uh let us uh go ahead and roll initiative so uh all right, let me get some music going as well. Jesus. Okay. All right. So. Um, could I have uh, Torsten just going last because he's hesitating and um, not acting that quickly? For sure. Um, let me go ahead and. I'll just set you as eight, essentially. Yep. Um, which would put you. Okay. All right. So, uh, in this moment, um, okay. Let us up on in. Okay. So, uh, as we begin, um, So we jump right in, uh, man, and you kind of raise, uh, your arm starting to do the, uh, the, uh, the components kind of required with, uh, with this spell in particular, attempting to daze one of these, uh, creatures, uh, immediately one will kind of, um, they're, they're all on guard heavily in this moment. Uh, and one will kind of see that and they'll look at you, um, but they won't. Hmm. They look at you with like an in, with an intelligence, um, but you can see there's like a a sliver of confusion on the creature's face. Um, but uh, it sees Anister with the crossbow drawn, uh, and the creature is going to spend an action to rush over, kind of looking to jump in the way um you know your your crossbow might be aimed you know outward towards the group right so one just trying to just immediately kind of uh, throwing itself into the fray jumping uh and it will stride up to you um 
we'll try to bash you with uh, one of these kind of like uh, crafted sorts of club. Uh, it'll miss. Um, just kind of swinging at air as you take a step back. Um, and then the creature will... Hmm. Yeah, I think it'll just wildly swing twice, uh, despite knowing the second attack is... Yeah, it just swings, missing wildly uh, with both attacks, which gives you the response. I am going to rise a stratagem. Okay. Let's see. All right, so gain the devise a stratagem. So choose a creature you can see and roll the d20. If you strike the chosen creature later this round, you must use the result of the roll you made to devise a stratagem. For your strikes roll, attack roll instead of rolling. Uh, that'll be an 18 plus your, I believe it's your intelligence modifier. So that'll be with a 24 total, 18, oh no, it's sorry, 22 total. All right. Yeah, so. Now I'm going to do a step back. Okay. And then I'm going to fire my crossbow. Okay. Perfect. So take a look at the creature. Um, it swings at you twice. You kind of just step back, you know, resetting yourself with the crossbow. Um, and are you using the... Well, you have to, right? Uh, yeah, I have to use yeah, it. Uh, absolutely. So that will hit. Um, it's not enough to crit, unfortunately. But um, go ahead and... Uh, I think you would just like... Uh, like roll to to attack with the crossbow, um, and then so I think we draw on there. There you go. Okay. Um, so you, you would just roll um, the crossbow, and then uh, you would just roll damage directly rather than rolling to strike. Uh, so if you go to your character sheet, um, you go to the second one, which says actions, uh, the little tab, uh, you'll see yeah. damage directly. And if you just click the red damage, I think it, it should roll directly. Oh, okay. Okay. I see it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. And then, uh, just, yeah, just roll uh, damage here. Okay, absolutely. So, um, the uh, the bolt unleashes and slams right into this creature's chest. Uh, just as it makes the second swing and hits nothing but air, the bolt will kind of slam right into it. Uh, it'll kind of take a step back, uh, looking down at it. It looks quite injured by it, um, but it still stands kind of ready to continue the fight. So, um, all right. So, that's your three actions, right? So... Device, step back. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, the larger one, the more intimidating one, um, it's going to puff out its neck. Uh, and I just want to make sure this is... Okay. Um, yeah, that's going to have to do. Uh, so, uh, its neck is going to kind of distend for a moment. Uh, before uh, it lets out this guttural kind of uh, shaking croak. Uh, and I need um, Torsten, Akaya, Manon, and Anister to all uh, click the uh, DC 19 will, if you see it right in the chat. Perfect. 
So you are unbothered, Torsten, as you have heard the sound many times in the past. Um, maybe not so... uh, DC 19 for the players. It just says Will. Oh, okay. You well, then I, then, oh, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then I expose the... Uh, uh, okay, so... Um, yeah, Akai as well. Wow. Um, so... Uh, Anister and... Man, and the two of you, hearing the sound, it it raises like this primal unease within you, right? The sound itself just kind of, uh, just kind of shakes you almost in like this, you know, this, uh, this weird, uh, kind of way. And you find yourself like a bit hesitant as to what to do next. Um, so, uh, we'll do that. Um, and I think, it kind of disregards Akaya in this, but it does have its eyes on Obak and Torsten. Uh, so, uh, one and two will be for Obak, three and four, it'll be targeting Torsten. Of course, it's Obak. Uh, so. On Frog Wars. Yeah, exactly. Um, it will actually draw itself. Yeah, it'll spend one action to get here. Um, and it has, wait, let's see, sorry, I need to check the distance, oh, you're 15, um, hmm, uh, as it draws closer, I think it's just going to, um, forego its final action, uh, just kind of stand there ready, waiting with the, the heavy-handed, um, weapon spawn uh yeah kind of like daring you to come forward almost so oba all right first i will stride right there all right um and then i'm going to for the first time attempt to trip this intimidating fella over oh, here perfect So that's just like a, just an athletics thing, or how do I do that? Oh yeah, yeah. Let me give you the action to trip. Uh, actually, it should be right here. Um, action character. Um, there you go. Uh, nice. Yeah, so you should see it. So just uh, target it, and then yeah. All right, and so you attempt uh, an athletics check. So if you just click athletics, it'll automatically make it against the target's DC. Oof. Yeah, so you reach out. The creature is just a bit too swift for you. Um, Sidestepping. All right, and then uh, map applies, but I'll make a, a strike. Okay, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so you go for the trip and then you go for the slash uh, both just uh, Narrowly miss the creature as it kind of uh, moves in this uh, strange way, you know kind of forcing you to uh, Kind of overextend yourself to try and hit but unfortunately missing uh, so three actions um, All right, uh, I think this one is uh, gonna Stride right up Akaya unfortunately uh, it's going to target you and wait, whoops. And it's going to attempt to bludgeon you. Eighteen will hit. Uh, so, or twenty-four will hit, I should say. Uh, so you take four points of damage as it brings down this uh, this heavy weapon, uh, kind of cracking. We'll say maybe it even hits on the ankle that you had previously kind of twisted as you fell, just kind of swinging low down near your legs and kind of smacks into it. Uh, so, uh, I think it's a section, a second or his last action. Um, it's actually going to look to grab you. Uh, so, It will, uh, map applies, since it has already made uh, an attack against you. 
Um, but it's going to attempt to grapple you. Uh, there's a minus five on this. So. Uh, critical fail. Um, let's see. So the the creature attempts to grab a hold of you, but in this moment, Akai, I mean, you're too, you got hit, but you're too on the ball. You're too ready uh, as the, the creature kind of pounces forward almost. Uh, so um, you, so you have a choice here um, as it reaches out to grab you. You weren't already grabbed, so you don't break free, but um, you can choose to grab this creature um, or you can force it to fall and land prone. Uh, I'll force it to land prone. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, the creature reaches out at you and you just kick out. Maybe you kind of uh, kick one of the legs out from underneath it as it kind of goes sliding and slams into the ground in front of you. So, all right. Uh, Manon. Um, is it frightened where all I can do is move away from... Uh, no. Um, that's a 5 I believe. Um, frightened... Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, frightened here just means, um, you essentially just take a... a minus 1 to your, uh, to certain checks and, uh, the DCs uh, you impose on creatures. Um, okay, I see. Yeah, but at the end of your turn, the frightened, it, you lose it like, you know, one per round. Uh, and since you're only frightened one, after this turn, you won't be frightened anymore. It's like a momentary kind of scare. Okay. Um, then go. I'll still... Can't... Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to press it twice. All good, all good. I'll still cast Days, which is a will save. Okay, and you're targeting uh, this one here? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so, the creature will attempt to beat the will save. Oh, unfortunately. Um, you attempt to kind of cloud this creature's mind, um, and it, but it seems very focused in and kind of, especially now that it's been hit with the bolt uh, from Anister, there is this, like, you know, this intense focus on Anister. And so as you kind of try to cloud this creature's mind, unfortunately, it just, uh, it seems to kind of shake it off. Uh, refocusing itself against Anister. Um, does that still mean, even though it, it didn't succeed, could I still enter Arcane Cascade? Uh, yeah, I believe so, right? I don't think... Um, and also, uh, it's a basic save, so I think it still takes half damage. So you can still roll damage. It'll still take a little bit, um, but it won't... Okay. Yeah, so it'll take half, so it takes one. But still, um, still kind of hurts the creature as it tries to focus in. Um, and yeah, as, uh, as you said, Arcane Cascade. Uh, and then I'll end my turn. There you go. Oh, um, the damage type would be piercing, I believe, right? I think it's, yeah, my weapon is piercing. Piercing, there you go. Okay. All right. So. Akaya. Um, so am I still prone or do I need to get up still? Um, I went ahead and had it so that like whenever you were shooting back, you weren't completely prone, but you weren't fully standing up. So it's just, we'll just say you're standing for the sake of like mechanics. Okay. Um, I turn to Obok. Forbidding ward upon him. All right. Um, so uh, he gains plus one AC against the uh, against the larger um, this one. Oh, absolutely, perfect. Uh, and then I will screw away. Screw away. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. So you trip at the creature, uh, kind of throwing it down. And then stand up, casting the spell, and then just backing away, right? Putting as much space between you and these creatures as you can. Uh, perfect. So, Torsten. Torsten will sort of see all this, 
he's not happy that we're sort of fighting these creatures, but it's done, so he'll uh, just sort of raise it, uh, he'll go 5, uh, 10, uh, probably try and interpose between the thing and his friend. Actually, he'll stand back-to-back okay. -back with Orbeck, that's that's pretty cool. Okay. Then he'll take an action to uh, raise a shield. Actually, uh, one second, let me just check this. Um, excuse me, sorry, I should be better prepared for this. Okay, he won't take an action to raise a shield. Um, his empty hand is going to transform into a claw, and he's going to attempt to uh, slash this thing. Okay, absolutely. Uh, so... Oh, that went private. Um... Oh, sorry. Um, uh, I'll, I'll roll it public. My mistake. Let's see. I think I can inspect it, right? Um... It's fine. We'll take, take the 19. Okay, so he perfect. will... Um... Uh, sort of the claw of a, the claw of some swamp creature uh, will sort of come down and, and cut into this thing's flesh and yeah. will sort of cause it to, to bleed but otherwise not probably do that much to it. Absolutely. So, slashing into the creature as it lays before you. Um, if you'd hit... That is the end of my turn. On a, oh, so on a critical it would have been double and the bleed. Okay. I just want to make sure the bleed was in persistent. Okay. Um, yeah, so you interpose and... This gouging claw, right, slashing. You bring it down and you rake a large wound over the uh, the body of this creature as it lays prone in front of you, uh, like struggling to get up. And just as it's about to, the the, the claw just rips across the body uh, and it just kind of goes back down, uh, settling it. Uh, so, perfect. All right. Um, so, a creature that had been dazed Wait, uh, this should be so I think everybody who had gotten feared so just be men and okay yeah so actually men and you're not frightened anymore there we go should have done that automatically sorry um so, uh, the creature with the bolt sticking out of it, yeah, I think it just steps forward on you, Anister, and it just, uh, it is going to do its best to just swing heavily into you. Critically misses, just swinging too wide, you are too light on your feet. Uh, maybe it's because you're drenched in water, right? Um... <laughs> something about it just makes it easy to kind of slide across the the surface of the mud of the swamp um and it's just you're just too difficult to hit in this moment um and i think it's going to swing and having missed with that it's actually going to open its uh mouth and just uh this large tongue is going to come throwing out and uh, attempt to, like a whip, smack you with the tongue. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> this guy is not doing well. Um, uh, thankfully, the critical miss doesn't do anything. Um, but the tongue kind of comes out looking to kind of snap and grab you up, Anister. Uh, but, again, you're just too light on your feet. Uh, so, what do you want to do? Okay, I'm still frightened, so what I have to do? Uh, frightened will just end uh, on this turn. Okay. Like, you, you have to deal with the, the, con the condition of frightened until the end of this turn. Okay. Alright, I'm going to do a step right here. Alright, perfect. And then I think I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to devise a strategy on Perfect. Intelligence this time. And... <laughs> yeah, you consider the situation. The your feet are not as well underneath you as you hope they would be. Um, as you're kind of trying to take a step away and put some space between you and this creature. Okay, I am for my second action. I'm gonna go ahead and do um. If 
I know that's going to miss, I'm going to do my, uh, a second attack with map minus five. Okay, absolutely. Um, hmm. But you have to take the nine, so I think it would, it would be a 10 total to hit. Uh, so this one would unfortunately miss, uh, because okay. the way, yeah, I think the way that the device stratagem works is that you have to take the number on your next attack against oh, that creature. that's right. That's right. Yeah, You're yeah, all right. Yeah. So, um, so you take yeah. a step back, uh, devise a stratagem, and then you take the strike with the, uh, knowing it'll miss but hoping you know possibly that something uh could happen so you just kind of shoot off and the uh the, the bolt just kind of goes flying past uh disappearing into the swamp behind all right uh so i think that is uh, three turns perfect so all right um you stand as like a, a bulwark obak uh against this large Boggard creature. Um, uh, it can, yeah, it's going to open its mouth and it is going to make a tongue strike against you as well. Fourteen, uh, does hit, um, or sorry, twenty four. Um, so, so you are grabbed by the tongue. Uh, so, uh, you can still kind of move. You're not immobilized like a typical, uh, but the, the tongue kind of wraps up around you and kind of starts to pull you closer. Um, you're not immobilized, so you can still move, but you cannot move further away from the creature than the tongue will allow while you are grabbed in this way. So, uh, grabs a hold. Um, uh, so that's one. It's going to take a step forward. Um, you do have a reach weapon. Uh, mm -hmm. So With the move action, I'll make a, an attack of opportunity. Perfect. So. Oof, yeah, so um, the creature just kind of ducks underneath and takes a step in uh, as it does so it is going to swing against you um, that same uh, blunt kind of object that it uses as a club oh, it's just going to narrowly miss as it kind of swings out you're, you're able to pull back just enough to, to give yourself just enough space, your back is kind of pressing up against Torsten, right? Like, just trying to take any kind of step further back to avoid. Um, you don't force Torsten forward, but the swing just narrowly comes by. So, that is the full turn. Uh, now, your turn. Uh, I will make a note um, that the, the meat of this creature's tongue, as it grabs a hold of you, is... Uh, it is... Uh, soft and could potentially be um cut through if needed mm -hmm. uh how would it work to get out a grab is that like an action to yeah it is a grab it is a an action to escape um yeah let me get it added Let's see, sorry. Um, there you go. I added it to your sheet. Cool. All right, I will um, <clears throat> attempt an athletics check to escape. Perfect. <laughs> Oof, unfortunately. Critical failure. Oh, uh, um, 
Oh uh, shit, so you don't get free and you're essentially stuck. Uh, you cannot attempt to escape until your next turn, so you're stuck in this moment unless you attempt to go for um, attacking, you know, or trying to remove this creature's tongue of some sort. Um, yeah. But uh, escaping is an action, an attack action, so everything from now on will be starting at oh, minus five. Action, yeah. yeah. So it was. Okay, um... Well, I will, I suppose, attempt to just slice at this thing's kind of as close to the base of the tongue as I can, but still attacking the tongue. Fair enough. Right up in its face. This has a different DC, uh, and a 10 will not hit, so you go to try and slice through it, uh, but the tongue is just kind of gripped around your body and you try to go for it, but uh, if you put too much behind it, you're going to end up slicing yourself and you just... You, you don't want to do that, so you just uh, you avoid you miss uh, cleaving through this creature's tongue. You still have one more action. So I can't escape. I can't move. You can move. You just can't move past the reach of its tongue, which is ten feet. So you can't go ten feet further away from the creature. More than ten right. feet, I should say. Uh, I don't even know what the benefit of moving that far would be. Um, sure, you know what, I'll take a step up there. Alright, let me, sure, 10 feet, okay, perfect. Alright, so, pull away the, the, to the tongue of the creature extending as it still holds uh, tight against you. Alright, um, so, uh, this one has been an action to stand up. All right, I'll get an attack of opportunity. You've already used your reaction this turn. I just got it. Oh, you no, just, yeah, you just got it. Yeah, just, yeah. 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 yeah, there you go. So, go ahead. Finally, I do something. Let's yeah. go. Definitely hit. Let's see if the creature even bothers. Does not. So, the creature goes to stand up, but you see it, uh, and you still have that, uh, we saw him ready, so you just, uh, swing it down at the creature uh slashing it before kind of cleaving through a good chunk of the body uh, and just drops before it can stand up fully to its full strength uh you cleave through the shoulder down into the center of the chest and kind of pull your blade back uh, and the creature just kind of falls flat against the ground all right uh that is that creature's turn so menon Okay, I'm going to step, and then I'm going to cast shield. All right. Um, sorry, I'm trying to give myself the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um... Shield the moon and then I'm going to strike. Perfect. The same guy. Ooh, critical hit. So, um, go ahead and uh, just grow, uh, hit critical rather than damage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Way more than enough. Overkill by a huge portion. Uh, Man, please describe how you lay waste to this creature in a single move. Um, Man is very casual about it, um, but it's very evident to any onlookers that they are skilled with the blade. All right. So, um, you pierce the creature through the back. It's focused still on Anister in this. Uh, just as it goes to like take a step forward, the uh, rapier just kind of pierces through the back. Uh, out through the chest uh, and the creature doesn't even know what hit it before you pull the blade back and it just falls flat on its face uh, the green blood of it just kind of starting to spill out and stay in the green and swamp uh, grass that's around uh, so I think I think you still have one more action here yeah oh wait you step no. you sh yeah sorry it was one two three yeah all right um so Akaya I uh, 
I'm going to use focus point and cast amped phase bolt against the tongue of the uh, uh, of the bogart, which is uh, grappling Obok. Okay. All right. Total that is uh, that does hit, but in roll damage, um, yeah, all right, it, it gets flat footed against this attack, so I don't know if it's taken that into account. Let me see your Facebook temporarily sends the target cover out of phase if it hits on a success, which is the to the beginning of your next turn. Um, yeah, the, the, the amp to part is the, the last, um, the last paragraph. Let's see. Attack is the target is flat footed against this attack. Let's see. Okay. Um, oh, flat footed against the attack. So um, it definitely hits. Uh, flat footed would just give it an additional two, so it would be. Uh, it would still hit, but it wouldn't be like a critical or anything. Yeah. Five points. Okay. Um, Pierce. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll say. I think it technically specifies uh, slashing, but I think magical piercing will work. Um, I w don't hold this to me for the future, but for now, uh, at the very least, um, yeah, the the phase bolt will uh, the amped phase bolt will slam into the creature's tongue. Uh, and just as it does, uh, the creature's kind of pulling back, trying to to reel Obok uh, back in towards it. Um, but the the phase bolt kind of pierces through the tongue. Uh, and just as the creature kind of like rears back, um, it puts enough pressure to kind of just snap the rest of the tongue off like a band, uh, like a rubber band almost. Um, and it kind of just spirals back into the, the creature's mouth. Uh, the, amount, the part that's grabbing onto Obok just kind of slips off, right? Um, and so Obak is no longer grabbed. Thank you, Torsten. That was a slimy thing that was really holding me back. All right. It so. wasn't me. It was. <laughs> yeah, it was Akaya. <laughs> <laughs> no. He didn't see the bolt. The bolt just uh, appeared inside the tongue already. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just distracted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Understandable to be confused. Yeah. Um, that's my last action. I will move behind. Move behind. Okay. okay. Perfect. All right. Uh, Torsten, you see this creature? Um, well, yep. you see, yeah, the one that was felled in front of you, right? And then the the immediate other one as the the tongue snaps back. Yeah, we outnumber this thing four to one, so I think Torsten will shout to the others, try and take it alive. We can question it. He'll go like so, and okay. see if this works. He's going to attempt to make a. Uh, he's going to attempt to make a grapple check. That's not very uh, good. But that is a critical a failure, failure, unfortunately. I can yeah. spend a hero point to reroll. So let's try that one more time. All right. Um, That's much better. Oh, really? Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately though, oh. it's still just not enough. Um, but yeah, you do not suffer the critical uh, part of the failure, right? So, um, yeah, you reach out and try to get a hold of the creature. Um, but again, like the the sli like the slick like slime of the the swamp coats the creature's skin. So as you kind of reach out, uh, trying to get a hold of it, uh, it's it's like you know your hand just keeps slipping trying to find uh, purchase. Okay, I've got one action left, so I suppose what I will do is I will try and set up uh, probably Obek to grab it. So with one action, I will cast Guidance on him. Perfect. There you go. Alright. So. 
Anister from across the way, you've, you've seen a man and just, you know, dispatch this creature with ease. And it looks like the others have also fallen. Um, only one remains now. Okay. I'm going to move, salute Manon, and then move to here. Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to make another movement to here. That's two actions. Uh, then I'm going to drop my crossbow, and I'm going to draw my sap. Okay. That's it for me. Okay, perfect. So. All right. So. Just a creature. Quick, like, if Go ahead. you had. I don't know how far you can move, Anister, but if you had moved, like, right here, it could have. You could have. Flanked the creature. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't. As long as I'm beside him, isn't that flanking as well? No, no, you need to be. Oh. Yeah. You need to be like a. a essentially, like a, there's an imaginary off. line. Yeah, yeah. Okay, crap. That's what I was trying to do. I'd be fine with that if that was the intention, yeah. Yeah, so. that was my intention. Okay, yeah, so you just move uh, on the opposite side. Perfect. All right. Um, Absolutely. So, um. Hmm. The creature has to check its circumstances so um hmm. in this moment i think uh you're going to see even in the midst of all of this craziness or the the kind of madness as all of you start to kind of uh circle around trying to get a hold of the creature and stop it from uh, continuing to move and get away um, even in the mid middle of all of this, it's going to stop and kind of listen up at the air around it. Uh, and with a sharp turn of its head, kind of look off in the direction that Manon stands, right? Uh, but looking past Manon. Uh, with that, um, the creature is going to attempt to uh, essentially dart away. Um, Obak, you see the movement? Um, you have reached technically, right? It's 10 feet. Um... However, I do not have my reaction. Ah, uh, we do not have your reaction, absolutely. So, um, yeah, the creature is going to... Does anybody have uh, an attack of opportunity in this moment? Um, I do not believe. Investigators don't. Investigators don't, okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think the, cre the creature will take... It'll use one action to kind of listen to its surroundings. Um, it'll do the second action to essentially uh, rush down into the swamp. Um, and then it'll use its final action to essentially, uh, dive down, attempting to hide in the waters. Uh, so, uh, as it does so, um, what is, have, uh, yeah, it's going to make, check here. Okay, so, um, I believe, uh, based on, yeah, there's, I doubt there's, nobody has a, a 16 to their perception, right? So, yeah, okay. Um, so the last thing you'll see is the creature just runs away. Uh, as soon as it reaches the water, um, it essentially just dives down into the murky waters below. Uh, and for you all, it'll just disappear from sight as it dives down in. Uh, the sound of whatever having spooked it enough to just forego whatever was happening around it and jump down into the swamps. What? Does passive perception work the same where it's 10 plus? Yeah, yeah. Then I have a 17. Uh, yeah, so it would have to beat a 26. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> well, I thought maybe that was like a critical success or something and it just disappears, but yeah. never mind. 
Um, so, uh, with that though, creatures rushed away uh, with a very kind of clear sign that something else actually kind of uh, turned it away. But, Oba, we still have a round of initiative to get through. What uh, what is Obak doing as you watch the creature rush away? Um, Obak will sudden charge on over and just blindly stab into the water as best he can, attempting to skewer the creature. Okay, absolutely. Um, blind attacks. What kind of let's see modifier would I do for that? Uh, go ahead and roll. I think everything is going to be circumstantial based on the fact that it's uh, it's like a complete. Um, so I'll do the quick math. I'm I'm actually uh, double checking to make sure I'm not wrong on the modifier. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so go ahead and essentially just roll the attack. Um, okay, so 26. Um, and there would be a negative for... Okay. Um, yeah, I uh, actually have to, to move you. Um, <laughs> but it'll work this way. Um, you rush forward, uh, you know throwing your full strength into it uh and despite not you know not knowing exactly where this creature is uh you rush forward and you since you just make a massive swing with the goose arm into the water hoping to hit anything uh and you absolutely do go ahead and um it's not a critical but uh go ahead and roll damage 14 absolutely yeah so uh, catching it from behind before the creature can get away whatsoever you bring down the mass, the quiz arm, right through the creature's back, uh, cutting a deep slash across it. And it still stands, huh? It and still I will uh, yeah. make a second strike. Uh, the second one, even with the... Yeah, at this point, um, definitely hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Uh, yeah, so, with the double swings, uh, rushing up behind this creature, uh, slashing it, and then double slashing it. The creature still stands, although it is very injured now. The deep wound across its back, uh, made by your blade, um... Or rather, the two deep wounds across the creature's back made by your blade uh, certainly stop it from rushing away further. Right, it kind of it's stuck here in this moment. Uh, Am I, so. so with those attacks, I'm pretty aware of its like location. You know exactly where it is. Yeah, even yeah. though it's underneath the water, I'll say, "Sorry, Torsten, I couldn't grab it, but it's right here." You know. Fair enough. All right. So, uh, Manon. So, the the sound before combat started, we all heard that, correct? Absolutely. And the sound that caused this guy, um, this guy, yeah. to run, we heard that as well. Uh, no, you'd have to make a perception check here. You'd have to use one of your actions to make a perception check to kind of get a feel for your surroundings. Would men be wise enough to do that? Uh, the, the one thing did, that everybody did see was the creature kind of like, you know, perk up at something, right? Uh, surrounding, looking around, and then rush away. So I don't know if that's okay. enough. Yeah. I guess maybe they would infer there's maybe more of the little frog guys. So I'm uh, for my first action, I'll do a perception check to kind of see if I can notice anything. Like get another... Um, yeah. Frog thing. Absolutely. Uh, with a 14, um, yeah, even in the middle of all this, you hear something rather large. Uh, you can hear, um, you can hear it breaking through the reeds, and you know it is. If you were to, hmm, 
You know, if you were to stand here for another six seconds, <laughs> um, mm. the creature would certainly, whatever this massive uh, swamp beast is that is now crashing through reeds and rushing in your direction, uh, it would certainly be within sight if you, if you were to wait another six seconds. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to use my full movement speed to get over here. <laughs> All right, perfect. So you perk up as well. You hear that and you're like, oh, fuck. Right. You hear like this sliding and the, the reeds kind of crackling, uh, almost like the sound of uh, uh, small trees being felled. As I move for my second action, I'm going to announce that to the rest of the group that something is coming. Fair enough. Uh, and then is the ready action to... Um, yeah, so to ready an action, you spend, uh, if I'm not mistaken, to ready, um, you have to choose a single action or a free action and essentially, like, make a, like, a trigger for it, um, mm -hmm. but it does require two actions to do that. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, I, ooh, there's not much that I can do. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'll just end my turn prematurely. Okay, absolutely. Uh, Akaya. Um. So knowing that something is coming. Um. Um. Did Menon announce that? Did you like yell to the others like something's coming? Yeah, I said yeah, something's okay. coming. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Would I be able to cast Forbidding Ward on someone against the thing that's coming, even though I can't see it yet? Um. Uh, let me see. Forbidding Ward. Yeah, let me see if there's... From the target enemy. So I believe you would, uh, you would have to be able to target the enemy to... Hmm. Yeah, I think unfortunately, uh, based on the wording, I think it's the intention is that you'd have to see the creature. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, Obok, uh, how are how are you, uh, your wounds? I'm doing just fine. for me to do I guess I'll reposition a bit here and uh, brace okay um, Torsten cool I couldn't make something like a nature check to try and get an idea of what this thing is uh, yeah you absolutely through. could yeah you absolutely could okay uh, I guess nature or swamp ethers <laughs> would swamp be accessible here or, or uh... Yeah, I would say Swamp would definitely be accessible, um, and it would it would actually be... Uh, the DC would be Lotus. easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we'll go for it then. Nah, that's not a great roll. Uh, 13, though, is enough, since it is using a very specific... Hmm. Very specific kind of uh, check. So, um... Hmm. Based on the sound of what is approaching, you. Hmm. Uh, how do I put this directly? Um. So there are a number of creatures within swamps in general, right? Uh, that are certainly to be worried about. There are also creatures that are mostly spoken um, in a more, uh, almost like a, a mythical, right? Like, you only, you know they're real, but nobody really sees them very often, right? Um, you have to be way out into the swamps to, you know, to ever have an opportunity. Um, and there are a number of large creatures out here. Uh, based on the sound, um, 
you get the feeling that the creature that is appro approaching is extremely, extremely deadly. They are essentially the, uh, the, almost like a, the primordial precursor to the boggards that are, that you have just been fighting. Much larger, much more powerful, uh, and it takes large groups of people to take one down, let alone a group of five adventurers. So I, I don't think there's any chance that we could possibly succeed here, is that... Um, <laughs> uh, I, I understand it's a bit metagamey, but it's just trying yeah, to use yeah. my knowledge. Like, if it's if it's going to be like a CR8 creature that's going to murder us all, Torsten would sort of flee. But if it's just like a very strong creature, sort of CR, CR3 or whatever, um, he might tell the group to sort of prepare themselves and brace. I would say, but um, think, instinctually, yeah. to avoid, I think, I think instinctually you would feel that the need is to run for sure okay in which case i'll i'll, I'll inform the others with uh, an action i'll say um it's here it's here the great beast we have to flee now L let it go obek and um ah it's kind of cheeky to do so um no it, it's i won't leave before the others but i no actually he's got he's a dwarf he's got short feet he's gonna have to run yeah you gotta um, get in which case uh, <laughs> you what, gotta get what sorry. direction is the sound coming from again uh the sound essentially it's coming out. from yeah the south so and well uh south on the battle map but you're essentially running east to west right so uh north of you on the battle map or above you is the direction that you need to be going okay i couldn't make like a perception check to look for some some sort of narrow area of the swamp where perhaps we could pass and the thing would struggle. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Okay. Uh, come on, dice. Ain't been great today. 15? Uh, I would say absolutely, yeah. Looking at the path ahead, um, the massive size of this creature, um, there are a number of kind of like swampland trees. Uh, you know, if you just rush off in that direction, the creature is going to follow by smell and maybe by um, by audio, right? Like uh, listening in. Um, so it is going to rush after you in the you know the fastest way it can think. Um, so putting a couple of trees on the path that it has to take to get you know straight directly to you is absolutely a smart plan of action. Okay, in which case he'll be able to turn to the group and be like. Quick, to the foliage! Follow me, everyone! And he'll begin moving his short, stubby dwarf legs in that direction. Perfect. Alright. Uh, so. Just in case, because sometimes there is always one. Um, Anister. With all that, um, what is Anister doing? Alright, so my first action, I'm going to pick up my drop crossbow. And I'm going to... So you're just gonna, well. yeah, you're just gonna flee right, following along with Torsten. Yep, we'll run right next to Torsten. Okay, perfect. Um, so we'll say that the rest of your actions are fleeing, right? Um, I'm gonna sheath my um. Uh, okay. Too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's yeah. All right. Um. So the creature is. Uh. You've slashed into it twice. Um. Even though you've directly hurt. Like hurt this creature, Obak. Uh, its head is not even. It's not looking at you like you matter. It's looking in the direction of uh, the sound and what, a, what everyone else appears to be uh, reacting to, right? Um, so it is going to essentially wait to see uh, what you do. You know, Obak is quite torn doesn't like to give up on his prey he'll look down at the creature but eventually his better sense will give in and he'll listen to Torsten's prompting and get out of here okay alright uh Manon 
Yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of there. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then Akaya. Yeah, I uh, follow suit. All right, so uh, Obak, as you turn to uh, move away, uh, the the frog creature will kind of look at you for a moment and then disappear underneath the dark waters. Um, essentially making its escape as well. And so, uh, without any more need, we will go ahead and drop out of encounter. Uh, we will switch our screen back to the home scene. And so. Okay. So, we essentially pick up with all of you rushing as fast as you can. Similar to, you know, at least in the, the grand scheme of things, like less than a minute or two ago, right? How how quickly combat happens in Pathfinder. Um, you know, just a, a few moments. You just do everything you can. You slay a, a, a couple of these creatures. Uh, but then you rush back into, you know, the fray of escaping this larger, uh, looming behind you creature that is now kind of crashing through. Uh, with your quick thinking... Uh, Torsten, you lead the party directly through uh, this clumped up area of trees, knowing, um, you know, the roots help establish a nice dry land underneath, so you don't have to worry about your uh, footing as much as you kind of dart through this area. All five of you kind of keeping pace with each other as best as you can. Um, you know, actually, maybe some of you are faster than others, so maybe you're rushing, you know, ahead of the others, just kind of keeping distance with you all but uh, nobody just outright pacing uh, away from the party just as the five of you kind of uh, disperse through the swamp uh, rushing through uh, it'll take about 30 well it'll take about sorry um, we'll say it takes about like 18 seconds or so before um, as you rush past the the tree line, the clumped group kind of darting in and between them. Uh, kind of 18 seconds after you clear this, uh, this group of trees, uh, you would hear this loud kind of uh, slamming and kind of cracking of wood. Um, and anybody who would like just venture a quick kind of glance back would see the uh, trees in this area just kind of shaking violently, but none of them falling. The creature is not powerful enough to just, you know, blast through... <laughs> Uh, fully grown trees and you hear this kind of guttural kind of uh, very similar to that croaking sound that the larger uh, frog or the larger boggart kind of let out to kind of put this primal unease in all of you uh, you hear it kind of come out as this like low uh, vibration of like bass um, and even at a distance that you are from it um, it may not frighten you but it's certainly you know puts the the hair on the back of your neck right that 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 same kind of primal unease f just for a moment kind of uh, clings to you as you rush away knowing that uh, had you stayed any further your chances against uh, such a thing would not been uh, too good not impossible but <laughs> but not too good so uh, Torsten kind of leading the way ensuring that everybody is heading uh, the appropriate direction uh, and not getting, you know, bogged down, no sinkholes, no more uh, distractions, no more, uh, nothing that is going to, you know, suddenly draw one of you away from the party, right? You're just in, all intensely focused on making it west. Um, and you keep up that pace, that uh, pushing yourself physically as hard as you can, uh, not wanting to venture just in case whatever that creature was behind has kept up to your trail and kept following you. Um you've kept that hard kind of rushing through and eventually um, you burst through uh, a tall set of reeds and the five of you are now back on the path that cuts through the swamp it takes a couple of hours of hard running but uh, you make it and you know that one direction will take you right back to meet the link cause um, the other direction takes you out and north of uh, the marshlands, you know, like you're heading towards the, uh, the first mountains. So, as you all kind of burst through, uh, finally an opportunity to kind of get a breath, uh, breath of fresh air, kind of, you know, catch your breaths, and, uh, figure out what to do next. What's going on? Well, 
think Torsten will just sort of double over, like collapse to his hands and knees, breathing heavily, sort of saying, ah, oh, I thought I was going to die. Oh, my heart won't stop beating. Yeah, that was, uh, that was very frightening. Uh, I don't want to know what that was chasing after us. That's why so left a mystery. <laughs> well, now what? Back to the road where we started. Can we go in with our bearings a little more straight? Or are we returning now? I know that uh, we previously discussed this evidence wasn't enough. I recommend we head back in, but do we want to regroup for venturing back in with who knows what out there? I still think that we need more evidence. One one creature is not enough to convince me. They could go claim it's a one-off. We need something else. I said I'd get us to this village, and I and I will. I will. Just give me a second to get my get my breath back. That was too close. What about what about the what about the three of you? Are you all right? I know you're not used to the swamps. You ain't you ain't shaking. Ain't losing your nerve. Uh, no, not at all, and I'm definitely not lying. <laughs> Man, and you're made of th sterner stuff. I say, you've got an affinity with this place. That's, that's it, it draws you to it, that's why you end up always get lost inside. The running I can handle, but I don't know if we'll, if I'll have the same nerve if we come across one of those arm things again. Well, I still say we need more evidence. I'll be glad when we're out of this place. The mud probably sucks. All right, well, we'll, we'll take a small break here. We'll, I'll get, get some good berries going. And then we can we can keep heading off towards the village. Shouldn't be too far away now. We traveled a lot of distance. As you can as you can tell by your by your beating heart and aching legs. If I'm right, and I usually am, we're probably no more than about an hour's away from now. Yeah. Absolutely. So you take uh, about ten minutes to right, kind of uh regroup on the road before uh, Stepping if on. anyone is uh, if anyone is injured, um, Torsten will hand them a good berry. Chew down on. So feel free to go ahead and. Yeah, did anybody get injured? Let's see. I don't know if anybody really got hurt. I think maybe Kaya just a little bit. Right? Yeah. Very lucky rolls. Yeah. <laughs> Very unlucky for me, but lucky for you all. I'll scar for good berry. Absolutely. And um yeah, I think uh, even at the base I don't I don't think there's even if it was the lowest roll, you would still be perfectly fine with um uh healing up to full, so you're all good. Yeah. It's not just it's not just about the healing, it's good for you. It's good yeah, for yeah. your digestion, <laughs> good for your skin. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll thank me when you're my age. You, you, you were given good berries to eat. <laughs> um, with ten minutes of downtime, is there anything around for Menon to get distracted by? Like um, any ruins or strange hmm. monuments? Uh, yeah. Uh, give me a perception check. As uh, as everybody else kind of right as uh, Torsten kind of you know, uh, yeah. Uh, imbues these kind of like good berries and uh, kayak kind of eats one everybody kind of gets their breath 
uh, you look around uh, with a five total. Um, from where you are on the road, there's nothing that is truly close to the to the road itself. Um, but you can see off in the distance, um, standing at the road, uh, a lot is kind of clear from both sides, except for the side that you essentially just ran through, um, the tall reeds. If you were to kind of travel just a little bit up the road, you know, maybe like 20, 30 feet, just a bit away from the others, and you'd look around, um, the swamp itself would be kind of flat and visible to you from, uh, you know, kind of looking out and into it. Um... There are a number of things that catch your interest, um, but uh, they do require you essentially separating from the group by quite a margin of space, right? Um, but you can see like some sort of stone stone ruins off in one direction, uh, kind of surrounded by a number of these uh, swamp kind of trees. Um, you would see a large mound that kind of stands out amongst the others because everywhere in this area is flat but that one mound is quite large uh it has a lot of growth all across the back of it um it even looks like there's some trinkets of some sort kind of left thrown across the body of it um you kind of see like a small little banner kind of waving um beyond that um the ruins and I'd say those two things are like the, the real things that kind of catch your eye. There are other things out there, but um, a lot of it just seems like ruin that has been lost to the swamp. Only these two spots kind of have any sort of semblance of like something interesting to them. I know I probably shouldn't separate from the party, but I'll bring it up to the others, like kind of what I see in case anyone knows anything about it or is interested in looking at it with me <laughs> um most of them would be too busy with the berries to, to go look at you this time then so and so i think uh your mic is cutting out a little bit like i hear it and then it then it kind of drops it's like you're like far away or almost I may be even too far away from it. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll tag along. With, I'll tag along with Manny. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, oh, Anister, so. Anister and Manny, um, while the others are <laughs> taking a quick ten minute break, the two of you kind of uh, start to head out. You're heading out into the swamp itself. You're away from the main road, but uh, at the very least, from where you're going to where you need to be, there's a clear line of sight, so you don't have to worry too much, right? Uh, so Manny and uh, Anister, two of you kind of dip off. Uh, which one are you heading to, Manon? Or which which one is true? Which one out of the two has uh, your interest? Um, I would say the stone. Okay. Um, structure. Stone structure, absolutely. All right. Uh, so the two of you start to make your way. Uh, this area up near to the uh, to the road at least uh, in the direction that you're walking now, is uh, much drier, at the very least, compared to the recent uh, area they've been kind of walking through. There are a few puddles, like, here and there, but they're small, and you can easily t see to the bottom of them. So there's nothing, you know, down in the depths, ready to surprise you. Uh, so the two of you start to make your way uh, in that direction. Um, do you do so openly? So, like, uh, does uh, put Torsten Obak and... Uh, Akaya kind of like see you obviously start to you know would you announce it to the group like hey I'm gonna go check that out yeah okay all right so um yeah Madden and uh Anister declare their intentions to uh go check out this strange uh, structure not too far away um within line of sight as the rest of you kind of rest up looking to get your breather uh Is that what you're uh, focused on while letting him kind of uh, go take a walk, essentially? Yeah, I'm, I'm focused on meditating to refocus. Okay, absolutely. So, um, all right. So, Manon and Anister, two of you to traverse your way through, uh, drawing closer 
to this uh, strange, uh, ruinous kind of stone structure that's out in the middle of the swamp, which is a little strange, right, uh, in general. Uh, structures out here are typically not made of stone. Um, you would, so you would tend to go for, like, you know, wood, something that can be easily uh, reconfigured whenever the swamp kind of dips and uh, kind of sinks, so. But still, uh, before you is a, a good kind of stone wall. And so the two of you approach. As you uh, get up to it, um, you can see that it used to be somewhat of like a larger, uh, almost like a larger structure itself. One of the walls is completely down, and actually the wall that you approached is basically the only wall that is left of it. Uh, on the opposite side, you just see nothing but, you know, stone kind of foundation. Um, and in the center of it, or what used to be the entrance, the, the interior of this uh, stone building, um, there stands this stone, uh, almost like a an altar of sorts, this circular kind of stone altar. Um, and what is very obvious to the two of you, uh, as you kind of turn the corner and kind of look and see what is going on, uh, this area has been inhabited recently. Uh, somebody or something or some people were here not too long ago uh, doing some sort of ritual type of event. There are the remnants, right? You can see uh, a few things that have uh, just been left behind for whatever sort of uh, magical or otherwise type of ritual that was done in this location. Uh, the carcass of an animal is kind of split open and laid out across the altar, the stone altar. Um, at this point, hard to tell what it was when it was brought here. Um, so much of it, you know, bones and meat and otherwise have kind of been lost. Um, but there was definitely something big that happened here. Could I use um, an occultism check to kind of try and infer what kind of ritual took place? Absolutely. Go ahead and roll occultism. Um, is there anything you want to do, Anister? Yeah, I'm going to put my crossbow up, draw my rapier out for just in case. Just in case. Okay, occultism check. Um, and I need to double check something for you, Anister, if it's... Because I forgot if it's uh, declared or so. Um, okay, so and then what is this? Okay, um, I'm going to say that this would activate your clue in as Madden kind of looks around um, at what is happening, like, what is happening, you're trying to figure out exactly what type of ritual or some sort was done in this location, um, you've been, uh, pursuing a lead so far, uh, this lead is, uh, not, okay, so, hmm, I, I would say this clue in for you gives you the, uh, The, uh, how the fuck would I say this? You feel like whatever happened here that Manon is uh, investigating, right, trying to figure out, uh, you think that it could be uh, attached to either or, whichever, like either or of the leads that you have currently following, both the bodies back in the city, uh, but also the strange corpse of the creature that you would just, you know, fought the night prior. Um, so, uh, uh, Hannon, with a 25, there's something familiar about the corpse that is left on the altar. Uh, and as you look at it, and as you kind of really think it through, uh, it, it comes to you, like, uh, instantly. It reminds you of the under 
carriage of that strange corpse creature that you'd fought the evening prior. And looking around at the type of ritual this was, uh, it is absolutely the type, uh, a necromantic kind of uh, ritual meant to bring something into existence. So whatever, now at this moment, uh, having seen that creature the, the night prior, really kind of clues you in on this. Um, the creature is not natural. It was created. And the ritual that you are now looking at was the ritual that created it. And so this uh, ritual created the arm algorithm? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um and you get this sense that whatever creature is left on the altar almost acts as a base for the rest of the amalgamation. And so like as you look at it, the the the, the corpse that has been left behind atop the altar and split open. Um, uh, it's definitely very horse-like, uh, but like a small horse. So. Okay, um, I'll share that information with, um, Bannister, and since it looks recent... Hmm. Maybe they're nearby still. Hmm? Um. Oh, good. Damn, it's, uh, so. Yeah, actually, your clue, and I think, um, the way it works is actually it would have increased the check, um, to Menon's. Uh, check so I think that uh, that 25 would have actually been a 26 or a 27 so yeah um trying to so with that uh Anister um so actually the way the clue in works it's actually you recognize something about it while the other person is investigating it uh and what you recognize about this uh about this this ritual of sorts is the rune uh, there is a rune inscribed on the altar that the corpse that is left uh, is left behind on. Uh, that same rune was the one that was left atop all the bodies that were heading towards the uh, the crematories of the crematory forges of Mictalan Claus. I want to make an occultism roll as well. Okay. So you still get the circumstance. Oh, you still have the, uh, the frightened. Why, why are you still frightened? Um, let me remove that from you. <laughs> um, so it's a twenty-one rather than a. There you go. Uh, so twenty-one. I'm trying to learn anything additional about this. Um. So, Manon got a lot of the details uh, correct here, right? The, whatever the creature is, um, you you figure that it's absolutely kind of essential. Whatever creature is laid atop the altar is essential with the second part, which is the uh, the raising of whatever undead type of thing as being kind of made out here, right? These corpse amalgamations, right? Arm 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 amalgam. Uh, that's a good word. Arm amalgam. Uh, I'm going to say, because you're already instinctively following a lead here, um, that the additional info that you get as you look around, um, you know that it requires more than a single individual capable of producing magic to complete a ritual like this. So, whatever this group is involved... There are multiple spellcasters within the cult or group that is performing these rituals. Necromantic symbol? Man, and I've seen this before. Remember when we were in the city and I jumped on that cart to check the bodies? This symbol was on those bodies as well. 
and it takes more than one one necromancer or someone to use necromantic energy to do this. We found another clue. I'm going to try to cut out that that rune symbol on it and try to preserve that as evidence. I think we're getting to it. I think we may have found a key piece to bring to our patron. Fascinating. Oh, this is exciting. It's like a real mystery. Definitely is. But wait. Those corpses were... Where were they going again? Supposedly they were going to be cremated or disposed of. But I don't know by looking at this symbol if they ever made it to where they well, if we can relate this to the Armalgam, then maybe those people were used to make other monsters. Possibility, but the way Torsten was talking about that Amalgam that we fought were from the local area here. So my concern is, are they testing out here? Serving bodies to use in the city at a later time? Or are they trying to perfect Ooh. your spell? Don't say that. That sounds scary. Yes, I think this is stumbled into something very interesting to say the least. We should tell the others. Agreed. Okay. Um, I'm going to try to get the rune as preserved as possible, and then um, tell men and said, uh, once I get this done, then let's go back and get the others. I don't think either one of us should be out here by ourselves. Don't worry, I'll stay until you get that done. I'll watch okay. you back. <laughs> Perfect. Um, and so I'll say, yeah, without having to make a check, you spend just a, a couple more minutes to quickly kind of jot down and get a perfect uh, inscription of the symbol. Um, and uh, yeah, you have that uh, as another potential piece of evidence. And so the two of you having uh, completely kind of surveyed this area, uh, you return to the group uh, of the others that are still kind of just now finishing up their... Uh, a quick kind of 10 minute break at the road so as you quickly return <clears throat> welcome back strangers hi um we have disturbing news men will kind of explain everything well manon found an altar looks like there was a sacrifice there but it was used to create that amalgam that we fought the other night and show them the symbol this symbol I found on those bodies that I was investigating when we, when we were first met up at the city there's these things are tied somehow or something's going on and there's necromancy being Turn to uh, I'll turn to uh, Ikaya and be like, "Hey, hey, did you hear what he said?" No, this is a good uh, additional uh, evidence, um, but I fear uh, we may need more in order to uh, tie this whole uh, mystery uh, together. Ah, oh, damn it all, I knew you'd say that. <laughs> oh, well, good work. Good work anyway. For, uh, good work oh, anyway, man. Good work. Uh, good work, Anister. We'll think of it this way. Now we get to travel further. 
which is always fun and interesting. <laughs> we'll, we'll frown at this. It's not too much fun can be bad for you. Anyway, it's, it's as you say. We should we should get moving. You're right to go, Obuk. See you whenever. The swamp's beckon. Aye. On we go then. Okay. Keep my rapier and draw my crossbow. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, as you head back in, are you wanting to? So, because there, there was something I was said. Um, potentially still in the area. Uh, did you want to return to the ritual as like the ritual area as five to better investigate? You know, potentially where? Um, because there was the idea of others in the area, but uh, there's also. I mean, you could easily just head to the location that uh, Torsten is aware of as far as the. The location that was there and then wasn't there. If, I, if no one stops him, he'll, oh sorry, go on, please. Uh, if I was a necromancer performing dangerous, malicious rituals, I would probably want to make myself scarce. So while maybe that area was convenient for them at the time, it still is by a busy road. I don't think, well, what I'm assuming is a busy road. It's paved, I guess. <laughs> so, um, I don't think, me personally, I don't think that we have anything to worry about other than weird swamp beasts. Only that. <laughs> I mean, and even then, if they're following us, then maybe we could confront them. Like that one guy that was in the town that was kind of staring at us. Mm, maybe. I just have a bad, bad feeling about all of this, you know. That's natural. I mean, necromancy. How unnatural. And why? Why in the swamp? What are, what are people planning? What are they doing? It's worth the desiccation of nature in this way. When he says that, men will kind of rub their arm nub. Anyways, can we move on? Aye, aye. I'll, I'll lead the way. And Torsten will. He'll lead the party towards the village unless anyone tells him to stop. Okay. So. Assuming that whatever or whoever had performed this ritual out in the swamps uh, would have made themselves scarce, right? Difficult to track. Uh, and especially in a swamp like this, it consistently changes, right? Um, tracks that were there one moment, you know, uh, within hours could be gone the next, right? So uh, rather difficult to attempt to track somebody unless you have extreme, extreme uh, experience and you are highly highly trained in tracking people as well as highly trained in the marshlands um so with that in mind thinking how difficult it might be to uh, follow after the group that uh seems to be responsible for the amalgam uh and you know who knows what else out in the swamps you decide You'll rack it up as another piece of evidence to an overall kind of conspiracy that is happening out in the swamps. Uh, and go look for more evidence, right? Uh, you've got two pieces. Uh, maybe three would be enough to present and, you know, be settled with. Uh, and with that, you go for uh, making your way uh, back to, or rather getting back on track with finding this uh, this lost uh workstation, I guess you so you can call it. 
Uh, and so what you, time of day is it? Uh, at this point, um, it's been a couple hours, so we're probably nearing like midday. Um, because it was like woke up early. Um, actually, we'd probably be just past midday. It'd probably be like one or two in the afternoon, right? Um, so you still got plenty of uh, plenty of sunlight left to continue uh, to continue ahead. Um, so I'm gonna say for a good chunk of this, at least uh, 30 minutes or so of the the travel that is uh, ahead uh, will be spent on the main road. Uh, Torsten, you don't want to don't want to risk stepping off too early. Best to just get exactly where you need to, and then just you know cut a straight line in the opposite, you know, in the direction that you need to go, uh, but from the road itself perfectly. Uh, and so you do so for thirty minutes or so. You all kind of walk. Uh, you have whatever weapons you have drawn. If you are on guard, if you're not, then you are just you know traveling on ahead. So, uh, can you all give me perception checks here, please? Okay. Um, so, uh, everybody above 20, you hear the approaching from behind. Uh, you are heading, so on the way on the road, you're heading, like you're heading back to uh, meet the lung cost, right? So you're heading back uh, south just a bit uh, before you cut off. Um, so you hear a, a cart approaching from behind. Um, everybody over, tw over, over 20. Um, Obak. For whatever reason, your ears are, you know, you hear very clearly. Um, while everybody, for the most part, everybody around you can kind of like perk up and hear the sound of uh, a cart approaching. Um, you have heard, uh, there's a difference in sound to you in the heaviness of uh, horses as they approach when they are armored. Uh, and... You know that the cart that approaches you now uh, is sure to be somebody of import, right? Um, you can just hear it, right? You hear, maybe you hear the, the metal of the, the horse's armor uh, or some sort, right? You, something just kind of clicks to you. You've heard the sound before when, you know, would-be nobles or very wealthy merchantmen would have uh, passed through your village back in the day. Uh, so, hearing this uh, approaching wagon, um, the five of you are kind of walking in the middle of the road, so you kind of slink off to one side. Um, do you continue to travel, or do you just kind of like step off to the side and wait for the uh, the cart to pass? Obak would probably just move over to the side, but keep walking. Okay. No reason to stop. Yeah, no reason to stop. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, uh, if anybody, nobody else wants to do any different, then uh, the five uh, of you, go ahead. Would, so Landon is not officially a noble, but if this is just like a person of import, are there like any flags on it or any symbols maybe that Landon might recognize? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Menon is from this area, right? Um, just not from the swamps. Is that uh, sorry. no? Okay. But they 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 did a little. They, they, I could assume that they did a little bit of reading maybe okay. before they came here. Absolutely. So maybe they read about them in books or something. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Um, fair enough. Uh, so, uh, yeah. With that in mind, as the uh, wagon kind of rushes uh, closer, you kind of take a quick look, you know, kind of trying to get a peek at, uh, whatever, whatever, um, uh, the flag or, uh, symbol may be used for this approaching, uh, wagon. Um, and yeah, you know, at some point you're going to hear it, right? So it's not like just because you didn't hit a, a 20 doesn't mean you'll, you'll never hear it. Um, you hear it approach. 
um, at a point. And so, you turn to look, uh, and the wagon itself is very, very well crafted. Uh, certainly somebody with a large amount of wealth available to them. Uh, the flag, um, I'm going to go ahead and use, hmm, actually, uh, you spot the flag, if you could then, um, roll me a, a society check. Yeah, can I roll one as well? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Okay. Um, so, uh, Anister, you know them personally. Menon, you've read, uh, maybe in, like, the locals of this region, right? Uh, prominent families of the area, right? Um, so, for you, uh, Anister, this is, uh, I'm gonna say this is a bit of a shock. Uh, this family is not uh, local specifically to Mithlan Kos, but they are from the region, right? The the continent that you're on, Kalor. Um, the family that approaches... Uh, let me grab it really quick, sorry. Um, okay, so... Um, this is, and I want to write it uh, in the Saturday group. This is the Akari family. Um, this is the symbol of the Akari family. The Akari family is a very, very wealthy uh, merchant, uh, kind of merchant house of uh, of Kalor in general, and a lot, and you, Anister, you know specifically that a lot of the wealth tied up in Mictalinkos comes from the Akari family itself. Like, they, they are huge purchasers in the raw material of the Ironmonger's table, right? Uh, and they themselves will kind of, ref they'll, they'll take what is given, um... The, the Iron Monger's table essentially just refines it and then sells it, uh, and then the Akari family will take you know the the wholesale of uh, these resources and kind of break them down into a number of uh, ventures. So this is a um, short of the uh, the noble family of Doldor. Uh, this is. Probably one of the most important families on the continent. So, um, and uh, I guess the uh, men and you would know similar stuff, although you may not have the the exact uh, the reference as far as like recent uh, or their involvement in Mithlan costs. You just know them as to be like a a very wealthy merchant family, right? A big part of the economy of Kalor. Uh, and so, um, as the carriage rushes past, it'll go about 50 uh, feet ahead of you all as you, as the five of you kind of continue to walk in the, the direction just off the side of the road, uh, making way. Uh, and the carriage will kind of stop for a moment. Um, but nothing seems to happen. Um, you can see that the, uh, the lead of the carriage uh, has kind of hopped off and has approached the the back of the carriage kind of wagon and seems to be like you know speaking directly to whoever is of import in the in the rear are there any guards present um it's just this coachman and whoever's inside just the coachman and whoever's inside which is um i would say particularly strange to uh to Anister, because he is very familiar with the um, with them as a as a family in the region. Somebody of this wealth never right uh, never would travel singularly in in such a way. I'm gonna sheath my uh, crossbow and walk towards this carriage. 
Okay. I'm gonna tell everyone there's something a little bit wrong here. Not 100 percent sure. Won't say it's 100 percent wrong, but they should have guards with them, and that's kind of has me concerned. I would say I'm gonna go talk to them, see if they will see if find out what's kind of going on. Alright, uh, so you break off from the group, uh, Anister, and you approach the, the wagon. I don't get too close. I, I step about like 15, 20 feet and, and just kind of stop to make sure the uh, carriage, carriage dri driver sees me. Okay. Absolutely. Alright. Um... So you step off to the side to be to be sure that you are seen. Um, is anybody else doing anything, or are you just kind of letting uh, Anisher take lead here? If it's you know ahead of us, Obak will just continue to walk, even okay. past Anister. If yeah, yeah. Anister stops <laughs> to be like respectful, Obak doesn't give a shit. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, but you're you're on the side of the road, so you're just kind of walking past. Yeah. Whereas uh, Anister, you kind of take a step out into the road to be seen, right? Um, and so as you approach, uh, drawing closer, um, the coachman, uh, who is currently kind of sp uh, leaned in and kind of speaking to whoever's in the back, uh, quickly kind of turns their head towards you, uh, Anister. Um, and you can see them quickly kind of uh, lean in and kind of whisper something uh, to whoever is in the back of this wagon before they kind of uh, hop off and will... Uh, the way they approach is not aggressive, but it's not, uh, it's not not aggressive, right? They, they step forward, they have a hand on what is, uh, to be clear, a very well-fashioned and, um, a very well-looking blade handle, uh, that hangs at their hip, um, and they're wearing the typical kind of, uh, for being a coachman, they're, they're also, you know, well-armored as well. Uh, just kind of uh, leather armor rather than like a heavier uh, plate or anything. Um, Manon is curious, so they'll probably join Anister. Okay, so you kind of walk up next to Anister. Uh, so the the coachman will kind of approach uh, and get about 15 feet away from you, Anister, before um, kind of putting their hand on the blade, just kind of like showing you that they could easily draw, right, you know, if they needed to. Uh, about 15 feet away, they'll kind of call out towards you. Um, uh, why do you approach? My lord has nothing to uh, part with, and you will not get through me. I can promise you that. And I make sure my hands are nowhere near my weapon. And say, Apologies. Do not mean to cause any form, harm or fear. The name's Anister Dartington. We've been tasked to investigate a, a incident that's taking place in here, and we're just double checking to make sure. I, I noticed you're traveling alone, which is unusual. So I'm just making sure that everything is okay. That nothing's happened. Um, they kind of squint their eyes, looking at you. Um, oh, do not worry. We travel with a guard. Uh, they are simply taking care of some thing further north uh, I'm sure they will ride and uh, rejoin with us uh, shortly but I thank you for your concern you're welcome you're sure there's nothing that we can do to assist like I said not trying to cause any harm not, try, not trying to cause any problem just mm -hmm. concerned because we ran into some creatures behind us that on guard for at least. Uh, you would notice as at mentioning creatures, there's like a particular kind of look. Like, hmm. A creature, you say? Then, uh, what kind, may I ask? We ran into some frogmen, and we ran into something that was not natural. Let's just leave it at that. Not natural. Please describe this not natural thing. 
Bandon's gonna kind of tap on um, Anister, be like, we don't want to scare them. They, they seem kind of on edge. Maybe telling them about the Armalgam will freak them out even more. Turn towards uh, Bannon and say, you're probably right. Have to be careful how we describe this thing. You could call it a sick horse. It may not be. That'd be close, but I don't know if this one would be enough. But, alright, we'll probably go with it. I turn to the driver and say, it, it was. It was a horse of some kind. But it wasn't a natural horse. It had more legs than you would expect to see on a regular horse. It wasn't natural though. Hmm. Uh, you'll see actually like a, a look of relief from the coachman as the kind of shoulders drop. Um, Obuck. It's probably at this point where you just kind of walk past and keep going. Um, uh, the coachman will kind of like take a quick look to ensure that you do not, you're not attempting to approach the wagon. Um, uh, no, actually, don't kind of, even look this direction. Yeah, they'll actually kind of even take a, a few steps back to kind of put themselves a bit closer to the wagon. Um, but uh, yeah, that look of relief as the kind of shoulders drop and they look at you, Anister, particularly. Uh, so then, uh, not natural. Uh, well, uh, the guard that we have um, is currently dealing with uh, something like that, uh, something that would meet uh, something of that description. I was, well, to be honest, I um, I would I was, uh, I was thinking that maybe I had lost my mind, but I guess it seems that this is something that is happening in this area. Um, well, <laughs> there's like a, a look of relief, but then like this realization, like, holy fuck, it's actually real sort of thing, right? So there's this relief, right. but fear. Um, in any case, uh, I, if you all ran into something like that and took care of it, then I am sure that my lord's uh, guard will uh, quickly dispatch it and, uh, well, uh, be back with us soon. Uh, to kind of look at you. Um, so, so you've seen something like what we described? Yes, I, um, <laughs> I knew the moment that I saw it that I must protect my lord, so I rushed ahead, uh, you know, leaving it behind while the, the personal guard of my lord, uh, dealt with it, is, is dealing with it now. Um, so, uh, yes. Men will turn to Anastar and say, maybe this could be, um, supplementary to convincing um cat meow i don't remember his name the jerk we could use him to testify we can ask him but since he's a noble he may not i, I, I will see if we can see if they will go to the iron Monger state I mean, you could convince them, like, monsters running around about or bad for business and whatever. True. I will try. I turn back towards the, the driver and say, I, I know it's not best for me to turn around and ask for a favor in this case, but we've been dispatched to investigate the swamps. And... If you could let the Ironmongers Table Council know what you've seen, that'll help bolster some of the evidence that we have found and that we'll bring back, hopefully shortly, to them. Uh, Why, well, yes, we have a meeting set with the uh, Ironmongers Table, and uh, well, we will surely not 
Uh, my lord will surely not uh, forget to bring something like this to their attention. Um, well then, uh, if there are things like that out here, then I must uh, must make for Mictalon Cos at, uh, at pace, so thank you for the information. Uh, thank you for confirming that I am not crazy or losing my mind. Uh, um, we'll kind of look and they'll reach into a pouch that they have at their hip. Uh, and this is, <laughs> um, at, on appearance, this is going to come across very disrespectful, but <laughs> uh, you r recognize that they're doing it literally to keep space from you uh, so that you do not like approach uh, because they still don't trust you to get right up close to you. Uh, they're going to reach down into a pouch uh, and pull a handful of gold coin and throw it in your direction and uh, uh, 30 gold pieces will land at your feet and kind of scatter around. Uh, sorry, I cannot let you get close. Um, but take that uh, for your information and for my for my sanity. We will be in uh, Miklilankos. Sure. I guess just use our names. Uh, what is your name? Uh, I'm Manon. Okay. That guy over there is... Anister Dartington. Oh. It's like, uh... Yeah. I just want to know that, um... Akaya and Anister have found more information to back up Torsten's claims. Torsten's claims. Okay. I will do, then... I wish you the best of luck in completing whatever whatever strange expedition you have embarked upon out in these swamps. And I wish you all the best of luck in returning to meet the Lankos in one piece and in good health. So, um... Likewise. Mm -hmm. Menon will give the guy finger guns. Well, finger gun. Yeah, he, he, he says that and then he recognizes like one piece, like oof. Uh, like, recognize, seeing that there's only like one, right? Um... They kind of like the the guard the coachman will kind of like get stuck in this moment before just kind of awkwardly turning away and approaching the coach uh, rather quickly, um, leaning up, saying something quickly onto the uh, the interior towards the the lord or whatever, and then jumping onto the wagon and pressing forward and just kind of leaving you all in a dust. I'll bow as they drive by. Uh, they've already gone past you, so they're. Continuing, they're just going further. Yeah. As they rip by me, as I've gone further ahead, I'll kind of just like cough as they kick yeah. up dust and be like, oh, "It must be nice not to walk." <laughs> it must be nice not to walk, indeed. Uh, so, this passing uh, noble, um, yeah, quickly disappears into the distance as the five of you kind of uh, continue on traveling. Um, I hope that guy's guard is okay. I do By too. Um, I start gathering the coins and, and turn to Ben. I think we need to press forward to see if we can assist this, assist him, or gather more evidence. Unfortunately, we don't have the body. Well, it might be like a two for one. Get it? Because oh. they're merchants. Ah, uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, you kind of quickly all kind of catch up. Uh, and so the five of you are back together. Uh, and you've reached the point now where it's turning the direct, uh, you have to go back into the swamps at Torsten's lead. Uh, Torsten, you kind of led the party to this exact point. From here forward, uh, you'll be back into the swamps and trying to locate the locate, or rather, uh, yeah, trying to locate the location of what used to be like a work site that was out here that is now just kind of gone entirely. Uh, so as you reach this point, there has been uh, some added details. Uh, has any of those details changed the plan, or is it still just find this? Uh, this, you know, this work site location, uh, gather some more evidence, and then 
Because at this point, you know that, I mean, it's 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 yeah. it's the opposite way, but you know that there is a guard fighting something similar to the creature that you just fought uh, the evening prior. I understand. Well, I'll, I'll put the question to the group. Inter interesting tale he had. What do you think about that? I think we need to go see what became of the guard, whether he was successful or unsuccessful. Still, we got more evidence for it either way. And if he's still in battle, we will gain possibly an ally. Akari family is pretty powerful and has a very strong dangerousness in this region. While saying that, I hand everyone uh, six gold pieces. Except for Manon, I hand you eight. Now, Why do I get more? I'm paying you back for helping me get the uh, medicine kit. Oh, I forgot I did that. I always pay my debts. Well, I consider you a traveling companion now, so I wouldn't... Don't worry about it. If you need anything. Much appreciated. But I still give you debts. <laughs> oh, isn't this nice? We'll be friends by the end of this journey. <laughs> Wait, Torsten, we aren't already friends? I mean, we'll all be friends. Of course you're my friend, little one. I'll give Manon a sort of an arm over the shoulders. So, um, despite the... Despite this now standing essentially directly where you need to break off from the main road onto uh, the swamps, if you were to go to this location that kind of disappeared out in the middle of nowhere, um, or like the work site, I should say, that it kind of disappeared, you know, rather quickly, you know, faster than the swamp typically, you know, uh, will make things disappear. Uh, now with this information that there may be a guard kind of fighting uh, something similar and uh, the idea to check to see if it was successful or if they were all slain or what happened there, um, you kind of stand at, the, at a point where it's one or the other. Uh, so, I know the, the, I guess the question was, Put to the group, um, but I guess if we could get like a, a voting here. So like, Obak will agree to go help the guard. Yeah, I think the group all wants to go find the guard, so I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, so that's at least okay, three. People. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so even though you stand right there, right, Torsten, like this is where you needed to be. Uh, that new information, like maybe, is just like a an additional sigh, almost, right? Like, huh. As you kind of turn and continue up the main road, uh, heading north now, right, uh, walking further away from Mictalon Kos, further into the swamp area, but at least this time it'll be by the main road since, you know, the guard would have been attacked on the main road. Uh, so, yeah, being there, right, having that moment, like, we could have, we could have just done this. You turn, and the five of you start to make your way to investigate the guard. Uh, and I'm going to say... I mean, go ahead. The abandoned village will always be there. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, and so, the five of you, as you kind of... You get here, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Well, and then you got to turn around, you know? Uh, you turn, and you start to make your way north on the main road. Uh, you guys aren't rushing or anything, right? You're just heading in that way. Or is there like a, is there a, a frantic pace put to you? The guard might still be alive. I guess we probably would hustle, right? Okay. Um, so then, yeah, you... Having just, you know, ran for so long and having just gotten your breath, basically, Torsten, uh, maybe the ache in your legs has kind of just started to die down uh, with this information and the potential for uh, saving others. Uh, the five of you kind of turn one last deep breath before you rush off up the road. Um, Maybe we can all chip in for a cart. <laughs> at some point, yeah. 
And so the five of you rushing forward, each of you weapons drawn, whatever, what have you, uh, as you would, uh, you move at pace, looking to make it to the guard, uh, potentially reaching them in time, um, potentially not. You are unsure of what scene may lie before you when you reach where you need to go. So I think for now, then, it's a great place to pause our story and pick up next time as you discover the aftermath, whichever it may be, uh, positive or negative, uh, as you look to try and intervene and see if you can save some of the personal guard of a great lord of the region. So thank you all for playing. It was definitely fun. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign out on the stream, so it'll just take me a moment, but I'll be right back. Um, but yeah, thank you all for playing, and uh, just give me a second, and I'll be right back. So appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. Uh, so thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed uh, hanging out. Uh, we'll be back on Monday for our Monday campaign, uh, Valderian Knights, as the uh, the ne <laughs> the neo noir fantasy story continues. Uh, thank you all. Um, definitely been fun uh reaching the 100 follower goal is big so i certainly appreciate that appreciate the follow from oddly lumpy trench goat so uh, appreciate that hope you all have a good day or a good evening depending on where you are in the world and uh, maybe we'll see you next time um this following monday so peace hope you have a good one later